their trouble and he bringeth them out of their distress. He maketh the storm a calm so that, wa so that the waves thereof are still. Then are they glad because they be quiet. So he bringeth them unto their desired haven. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He that turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground, a fruitful land into barrenness for the wicked of them that dwell therein. And turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground unto the water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell. And they may prepare a city for habitation. And sow the fields and plant vineyards that, which may yield fruits of increase. He blessed them also so that they are multiplied greatly and suffered not their cattle to decrease. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poured contempt upon princes and caused them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Yet set it he the poor on high from affliction and maketh him families like a flock the righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. And let us all say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. As it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory, forever and ever. Turnquist, Brent Simonet, Desmond Bannister, Renwood Wells, Jeffrey Lloyd, Dr. Greenspan, Marvin Dane, Franklin Campbell, Benicio Diagula, Michael Pintard, Darren Henfield, Ramal Ferrara, Lanisha Rowe, Renzo Rowe, Ellsworth Johnson, Philip Davis, Vaughn Miller, Patricia Parker Edson, Aaron Lewis, Carlton Bolag, James Aubrey, Travis Robinson, Adrian Gibson, Donald Saunders, Frederick McElpine, Hank Johnson, Mark Hume, Michael Polk, Miriam Reckley Emanuel, Reese Chipman, Ruben Ramming, Ricky Mackey, Shannon Dawn Cartwright, Danelle Ferguson, Glennis Hannah Martin, Icewell Forbes, Chester Cooper. Good morning again, honorable members. Honorable members, once again, because of the circumstances that uh, we find ourselves in with respect to COVID-19, coronavirus pandemic, um, all members are uh, deemed to be present. Introduction and swearing in of new members. Laying of documents by ministers. Statements and communications by ministers. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Kalani. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, you look around the day, you see that uh, from the official cabinet group, there's only three of us, as most of my Cabinet colleagues are completing quarantine because of potential, and I use that word very carefully, potential 
exposure, but as three were not present during that particular time. But looking in here today, you can honestly say that the FNM has a deep bench. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Yeah, and good, good stand. But, Mr. Speaker, in my national address this past Sunday, I advised the country on the situation we currently face in the COVID-19 pandemic. which remains a dangerous and deadly threat to the entire world and to our Bahamas. I am encouraged with the progress in Grand Bahama and most of our family islands. Viral numbers are low in these places. Therefore, regular life and businesses can proceed with greater normalcy. Residents on these respective islands are to be commended. I highly encourage the residents of Grand Bahama and the family islands to keep complying with the public health advice of mask wearing, physical distancing, and proper sanitization. The more they do so, the more we will be able to live with few restrictions. However, Mr. Speaker, we face urgent challenges here in New Providence and in Abaco. The persistently high case numbers, particularly on New Providence, have placed immense strain on our healthcare system and our medical professionals. Our hospitals are full. Medical teams have been pushed to their capacity. If there is further deterioration in the COVID-19 situation on our most populated island, we risk a collapse of the healthcare system. Mr. Speaker, my government uses science and data and listens carefully to the recommendations of experts to guide our policies. We also consult with various stakeholders to get their feedback and to discuss the policies we are considering. This is the worst crisis the Bahamas have faced in its modern history. We are living in an unprecedented global emergency. And each day is an emergency and we have to constantly make adjustments day in, day in and day out and sometimes on an hourly basis. This is going to be our reality for some time. Anyone who tells you otherwise does not understand this moment in history. And today, Mr. Speaker, the current situation in New Providence and Abaco requires new restrictions in order to reduce infections and, most importantly, to save lives. Sadly, we are averaging one death per day. In dealing on these restrictions, we have balanced the need of our people to make a living along with the serious public health concerns of the moment. Nobody likes or wants complete lockdowns or full restrictions. We seek, Mr. Speaker, to implement what is reasonable and necessary.
for a period of time in order to reduce sickness and reduce death. When these goals are achieved and cases are reduced, we remove these measures so that people may get back to a greater level of normalcy in their lives and livelihoods. We know that restrictions are hard on family life. They are hard on businesses and people's finances. They're hard on everybody's mental health. However, Mr. Speaker, restrictions are needed now on New Providence and Abaco in order to address the current situation. Yesterday, the Cabinet had a special briefing from the Pan-American Health Organization and World Health Organization representative to the Bahamas. The government's health consultant and representatives of the Ministry of Health. The leader of the opposition and his team were invited to attend this brief briefing, but declined to do so. Mr. Speaker, in order to balance the health, economic, and social needs of the country at this time, the cabinet has agreed to a variety of measures for both New Providence and Abaco. The measures we are taken, taking are multi-dimensional and include enforcement of regulations as well as encouragement and ongoing public education. But the greatest measure, Mr. Speaker, is still individuals' responsibility. I want to repeat that. The greatest measure is individuals' responsibility. Just as we are individually responsible for our personal health in terms of what we eat, exercise, and other good habits, we are responsible for wearing masks and following other guidelines. But because COVID-19 is very contagious, we also have an individual, moral, and civic responsibility to protect other people from catching the virus from us. I remind the House that one in 100 residents of New Providence have now been infected by COVID-19. Mr. Speaker, I would like to inform the House and the Bahamian people of these measures, which are designed and targeted to reduce and control the spread of COVID-19 on both New Providence and Abaco. The following provisions will take effect on Friday, the 9th of October, 2020, at 7 p.m. I repeat, at 7 p.m. this coming Friday, the following provisions will take effect. Effective beginning this weekend, there will be full 24-hour weekend curfews for New Providence and Abaco only. The weekend curfews will begin Friday evenings at 7 p.m and end Monday mornings at 5 a.m. This holiday weekend, there will be a full three-day, 24-hour curfew beginning Friday, the 9th of October at 7 p.m. to 5 a.m. Tuesday, the 13th of October. Again, this weekend curfew will only be effective for New Providence, 
and Abaco. That does, this does not include Grand Bahama, Acklands, Crooked Island, Long Island, San Salvador, Lutra Harbor Island, Spanish Wells, and Berry Islands. Andres, how could I forget? Andres, Bimini, that's my car. Mr. Speaker, all the other family islands, excluding the Providence and Abaco, this applies to. During these weekend 24-hour curfews, only essential services, including the uniformed branches, customs and immigration departments, public health services, sanitation services and essential utility services will be permitted to operate. Sea and airports will continue to operate and there will be no interruption to flights. The only other movement beside essential service will be for one hour of worship services on Saturdays and Sundays between the hours of 7 a.m. and 1 p.m. No food stores, pharmacies, gas stations, construction sites, or laundromat will be permitted to op open to or operate during the full 24-hour weekend curfew. To the extent, Mr. Speaker, that this is not already the case, food distribution by the National Food Distribution Task Force will be tailored to take place during weekdays. For New Providence and Abaco, the weekday curfew, Monday to Friday, will now be from 7 p.m. nightly to 5 a.m. the following morning. No, and I repeat, no social gatherings will be permitted whatsoever. And the police will be aggressive for the, pursuing those aggressively in the case of any Airbnb. This will be strictly enforced in order to reduce and control the spread of COVID-19. The curfews, Mr. Speaker, will likewise be enforced. And the police will set up monitoring stations at the various locations and individuals on the street at 7.01 will be prosecuted. There is now a confidential hotline for citizens to report on people hosting social gatherings. The hotline number is 702-9967-9. I repeat, if you see the individuals engage in social gatherings, parties, etc., the hotline number is 702-9967-9. During the week, religious services may continue based on the Bahamas Christian Council guidelines approved by the Ministry of Health. Churches may also open for individual and private prayer during the week. Health officials have advised that the incidence of case data reveal that it is necessary to revert to the prior position regarding funerals. As such, in addition to the officiant and the undertakers, 10 people will be permitted to attend a funeral, which may now take place at the graveside. Regrettably, wakes and repasts will not be permitted. In addition to the officiant, only 10 people will be permitted at a wedding. Wedding receptions will not be permitted. 
I understand, Mr. Speaker, and fully acknowledge that these changes will be difficult for those who are planning for a larger number of individuals at weddings and funerals this coming weekend. In order to reduce the movement of residents of New Providence, I also wish to announce that schools on New Providence and Abaco may only proceed via virtual means. For now, there will be no in-person school, schooling for students. I also wish to advise that beaches and parks on New Providence and Abaco will once again be closed. Exercise is permitted in one's neighborhood Monday to Friday between the hours of 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Exercise on the weekend may take place only within an individual's yard. Unfortunately, Mr. Speaker, and regrettably, unfortunately, gyms will once again be closed. I acknowledge that they were only very recently opened. We will try to open them again as soon as possible. Mr. Speaker, the workplace is a major source of community spread for COVID-19. All of those who can work from home should do so. I advise and I encourage telework and, where possible, a shift system so as to allow minimal number of individuals in the workplace. We have many reports of individuals in offices not wearing masks and not maintaining physical distancing, proper sanitization, and other health measures. Such practices are helping to spread this deadly virus. I again make a strong appeal to those businesses that are not complying with health and safety guidelines to do so immediately. It is the right thing, thing to do legally and ethically. Let me again thank the many citizens, residents, and businesses who are consistently following the health and safety guidelines. To limit community spread in the public sector to the greatest extent possible, public officers will be instructed by their permanent secretaries to work from home. Cabinet ministers in quarantine will work from home during the quarantine period. For restaurants, Mr. Speaker, for the time being, only take away curbside and deliveries will be permitted. There will be no indoor or outdoor dining on New Providence and Abaco for now. Where takeaway services are being provided, enforcement monitors will be vigilant to ensure that there is no congregating either indoors or outdoors by patrons. All Retail will be curbside except for food stores. For all other retail, customers are not permitted to enter stores. Gas stations are not permitted to provide in-store services. And the speaker, I should clarify that there are many hotels that has guests and yes, they can have outdoor dining for their respective guests. Mr. Speaker, as a part of our enforcement efforts, all fines for breaching health protocols, except for the mask violations, will be doubled. 
Tu veux une carotte comme... To encourage compliance with public health protection measures, there will be an amendment to the Emergency Powers Order that causes businesses to be closed for business on their second violation of the order. This will be closed, they will be closed for 14 days. Mr. Speaker, what that means, the business violate the order, they are fined. On the second violation, they will be closed for 14 days. If a business or construction site has an infection rate of 10% of the full staff complement, the business or construction site will be closed and all staff members will be quarantined for the prescribed incubation period of 14 days. Consistent with the international guests using these facilities, Bahamians and residents seeking to book at hotels on New Providence and Abaco will be required to have negative COVID RT-PCR tests before entering such facilities. Mr. Speaker, health officials are setting a goal with targets and timelines that would measure the impact of the restrictive measures and the likely success of mitigating the transmission of COVID-19 in New Providence and Abaco over the next 14 days. The ultimate measure of success would mean that the number of new cases is no longer increasing, hospitalizations are decreasing, a reduction in the need for ICU care or intensive care, and a decrease in the number of COVID-19 related deaths. The success of these measures will inform whether more restrictive measures are needed or if measures can be relaxed. Mr. Speaker, the measures I have outlined have no effect on air travel. There has been no change to the current travel regime. The opening of the international tourism sector remains set for the 1st of November 2020. Indeed, we are also taking these measures in order to reduce our case numbers in preparation for the border opening of our tourism sector. Our economy was the strongest it had been in decades before COVID-19 hit. Just like most of the world, it is going to take a long time to recover and to work our way back. We cannot get our economy on future track, future back on track unless we beat this pandemic. The reality is, Mr. Speaker, that a massive number of jobs our country depends on uh, in the tourism sector. Until tourism is back, we are going to continue to face large hurdles. We cannot bring tourism back until COVID-19 is on the run. So, Mr. Speaker, I ask every one of our fellow countrymen and women, for the sake of our families, for the sake of our frontline fighters, for the sake of our economy and our country, let us fight for the future by fighting the COVID-19 together. Mr. Speaker, we are in a particular and difficult circumstance during this flu season. We are in the midst of a pandemic. The additional burden of the flu season may further affect individuals and our healthcare system. Because the flu season is now upon us, I make a very strong appeal for Bahamians to get a flu shot. Please consult your doctor or a medical professional if you have any questions about the flu shot. I myself, Mr. Speaker, 
they'll be getting a flu shot as soon as possible and encourage the members of parliament to do the same. Mr. Speaker, I was asked by one of my constituents why we use a number of measures we do in fighting the virus. When someone stays at home and they are physically distant from large numbers of people, they reduce the risk of contracting and spreading the virus. The restrictions are not a punishment. They are a public health tool to create more physical distancing across the community to reduce the potential to spread this very contagious virus. And right now, Mr. Speaker, on New Providence and Abaco, we need everyone to come together in a spirit of unity to fight the current spread of this deadly virus. The virus likes division and disunity, both of which it exploits doing harm to us all. Whomever sows disunity and division also helps to spread the virus. So we need, Mr. Speaker, all residents of the country, political parties, businesses, churches, unions, the media, and civic organizations to be on one accord. The more we cooperate, the sooner we can lift the measures and resume normal lives. The pandemic will be with us for some time. We will be battling this well in the next year, Mr. Speaker. What countries across the globe have learned is there will be waves and surges of this virus. When they come, we must not panic. We must rise to the occasion as a people and do the things we need to in order to drive the numbers down. We are all tired of this virus. We all want to be able to see our loved ones, colleagues, and friends as we once did. We must also be realistic with our current expectations. This is the worst pandemic in 100 years. A lack of discipline, slackness, and impatience will only lead to many more deaths and even worse consequences for our economy. In our first wave, we did what we had to and brought the numbers down. In Bimini, we did what we had to and brought the numbers down. In Grand Bahama, we did what we had to and brought the numbers down. We must take this knowledge and experience and our present economic realities and apply them to the current problems on both New Providence and Abaco. Let us, the residents of New Providence and Abaco, now get this done together. The speed at which we reduce case, cases, numbers on these islands, is in our hands. Our success is in our hands. We do not want a significant amount of virus circulating on New Providence and Abaco to get to the other islands and create problems across the entire country once again. We will win this round in the long fight against the virus. Let me close, Mr. Speaker, by making a strong appeal to social media influencers, the social media gurus, to do all you can to encourage adherence to the proper health guidelines and preventative measures 
and to encourage the spirit of we are in this fight together. I say to the social media gurus and those who live on social media, spread the message, the message of unity. Create songs of unity, songs of encouragement, songs of remembering that there should be no gathering. And I say to the entrepreneurs, the young entrepreneurs out there, this is your opportunity to do your part. Create t-shirts with slogans and messages. Let's fight COVID together. United against COVID. And every Friday, Mr. Speaker, I encourage all Bahamians throughout the length and breadth of our country to wear t-shirts with the slogan, anti-COVID, or let's fight COVID, let's declare Friday's anti-COVID t-shirt day. The message must be loud and clear so that everyone understands that we are at war. The world, Mr. Speaker, is at war. We are all at war against COVID, a virus that we cannot see, but a virus that does grave dangers and cause death. We can't say in a nutshell, Mr. Speaker, that we are experiencing World War III. Let us use our energy positively. Let us become energized to save our country. Let us become energized to save our tourist industry, energize to save our future, to save our jobs, and to save our livelihoods. The sooner we do this, Mr. Speaker, the sooner we can return to work. I ask all Bahamians to reach out to family, friends, neighbors, and colleagues to remind them that what we do together will determine our shared future. May God bless our Bahamas and may God grant us wisdom, discernment, and fortitude. The speaker, before I take my seat, I want to say to all Bahamians that the supermarkets are opened every day, Monday through Friday, and there need be no panic because there are sufficient food and the supermarkets will be opened. And as the emergency orders are published, more details will be provided. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. May God continue to bless us.